welcome um, everyone. So my name is Jennifer Hines. Uh, I'm presenting the paper today, but the work is um, Christina Dolphin and, and mine. Um, and we are looking at emergency remote teaching, learning from and in a crisis. And then what lessons can we learn um, from the COVID-19 pandemic to inform digital strategy within schools? Um, so a bit of an introduction to the study. Phase one, which I'm presenting today, is the qualitative interviews. Um, and what we have done is we are exploring the digital divide in relation to access to and usage of ICT resources during um, online teaching periods within schools. Um, and this is underpinned by the technology acceptance model and the job demand resources model. We have two research questions that we're looking at, um, and they are what were the um, Irish primary school teacher experiences of teaching online during the COVID-19 school closures? And then can these experiences help us to integrate ICT into the classroom going forward? And actually from January onwards, that's when we're starting a quantitative um, element of this research. Um, so a bit of a kind of a, a brief background to the study. Um, we know that we're living in a world which is becoming increasingly digitized. Um, and we know that digitalization can improve productivity um, um, and education. And we also know that we can use it as well to promote higher order thinking and active construction of knowledge. So it's therefore important that teachers prepare students for um, a, di a, a digital future. But the research has shown uh, that there are problems in how will we meaningfully integrate this into the classrooms going forward um, and that classrooms typically haven't really evolved much and they're quite traditional still to this day. Um, so what we what we did is we used this opportunity of the COVID-19 closures to kind of gain some um, gain some insight into how teachers uh, behaved during this, what were their behaviours, what were their experiences, what were their emotions uh, regarding ICT exploration, usage, and then the successes and the failures during these periods as well. And we believe that this data is valuable to help in building um, effective ICT usage policies in primary schools um, going forward. Obviously, having said that, there are some, some drawbacks of digital, digitalization, such as excessive consumption. And we even see that you know, in higher education. Um, for, for us as educators, that it, it can lead to excessive consumption as well. And then skill gaps uh, due to technological advancement and then unequal access as well. So that's kind of a, a brief background. In terms of the literature, we were looking to explore how ICT is integrated within Irish primary schools. What are the tools and the strategies that, that teachers use? And then what are those lessons learned? And by examining the literature, we were able to identify three major themes. And they, the first theme is the developments in Irish policy and that shift toward the constructivist ICT integration. So um, previous, previous ICT policies, when Ireland was kind of lagging behind other European countries, were very much so focused on, on gaining access to ICT, but now there has kind of been a shift towards we need to use it in a more constructivist manner in the classroom. Um, the literature has also spoken about digital inequalities, and that relates to access to, to digital resources. And that's not just within Ireland, that's across the globe. There are studies during the COVID-19 pandemic looking at countries like the UK, looking at New Zealand, Australia, um, Indonesia, et cetera. And then another important strand within the literature is the, te uh, the teacher's ICT capabilities. So what are they actually learning in their undergraduate studies? And then post-qualified as a teacher, what is the kind of engagement in CPD and what is the, the type of CPD that is being offered to teachers? And through that, we believe that there's two major elements of, of a teacher, a primary school teacher, and, and rolling out effective ICT policies. And that is the, the teacher as an ICT user, but also the teacher as an ICT facilitator. So they need to have the access to the resources, but they also need to have the ability to use those resources effectively. Um, and with a, in the absence of this, that will hinder uh, strategic success. So as I mentioned, our, our theoretical framework uses both the technology acceptance model and the job demand resources model. 
the, the, the TAM looks at um, why people will accept or why they potentially will reject different technologies. And that's very much so based on how useful they perceive a technology to be and then the effort that will be required to use that. Um, but that also crosses over into the psychological elements which are covered on, under the job demands resources model, um, which, which you can you can view ICT as potentially a resource within a school or potentially a hindrance demand. Um, and within the JDR literature, a hindrance demand leads to greater levels of stress, whereas the perception of it as a resource would lead to higher levels of motivation and engagement in ICT um, resources. Also within that literature, uh, the presence of resources lead to higher levels of self-esteem and self-efficacy, and this could help teachers in moving forward towards um, goal completion and successful um, application of any new kind of ICT uh, policies. Um, importantly, the more familiar somebody is with the, an online tool, the more likely they are to accept um, that tool. And then also research during the COVID-19 pandemic found that teachers um, who had prior experience with remote instruction were better equipped to handle, um, handle the, let's be honest, a very extreme um, situation during COVID-19. Um, so that brings us to our sample. Our, our, this is, so this is the, I'm presenting here the qualitative side. So we conducted semi-structured interviews on a small sample of 13 primary school teachers and our interviews lasted from 25 to 106 minutes. We used thematic analysis and Envivo version 12. Um, and there were three main themes that emerged from the, the, the thematic analysis, and they are the digital access divide with a sub team um, in relation to managing the digital access divide and then digital use divide, which relates to lacking knowledge and experience, the teachers experiences of gaining new skills and then any concerns they had with ICT usage going forward. Um, and then another theme related to contingency planning and how teachers <clears throat> became more pragmatic in terms of their teaching and then how they looked out for each other and supported um, one another. Um, so just very briefly, the, the digital access divide, um, we're all kind of, I assume we're all kind of familiar with that. Um, but in schools in general, it wasn't really a problem per se. The schools were typically quite well equipped with iPads, interactive whiteboards, computer rooms, etc. But actually when children in this context were sent home, that's where the access divide particularly came, uh, became apparent. So children no longer had access to these resources and therefore the school was a very important provider um, of resources. Some teachers spoke about students and, and this as well has happened in, in in universities that students are working from mobile phone devices that they don't have access to resources they're trying to work from very small screens and then issues with poor wi-fi as well leads to problems in terms of even just uploading documents um, and videos etc so teachers then had to very quickly learn to find ways to manage this digital access divide so they employed strategies which helped them to try to reduce the gaps between different group pupils. Um, and some of the issues they faced were families were struggling um, during, during the pandemic and they were unable to dedicate time to homeschooling for various reasons. Um, and there was also e unequal resource distribution within homes. So for example, if families had three children, that there wasn't enough equipment there for them to be able to provide this to, um, to all of the children. And then in some cases, a lack of willingness from, from parents to, to potentially even print activities. But teachers in general were very sympathetic of the situation and schools found ways to help pupils. Um, and this involved sending iPads, Chromebooks, books, et cetera, home to families. Uh, but throughout the interviews, teachers emphasized the need to be flexible in terms of how they managed parents um, during the COVID-19 pandemic because they were very reliant um, on them. 
So then the, the second theme looks at the digital use divide and it explores lacking knowledge and experience, one of the, the sub themes. So many of the teachers actually felt quite comfortable using ICT and they had reasonable um, ICT skills. And this came from past experience. Uh, one teacher specifically spoke about having experience during his um, teacher training, whereas others spoke about themselves in terms of being quite technologically literate and, and being quite techy. Um, and then others even had experience from when they were students themselves in using things like Blackboard, Collaborate, etc. So they had experience of uh, VLEs. But some teachers as well expressed concern for those who may be trained several years ago um, and hadn't really engaged in any CPD since their university studies, and that there were kind of large gaps uh, between them and where they needed to be going forward um, within the schools. And one of them in particular spoke about, you know, engaging in activities and they were hurdles and how they lacked in skills and they wasted enormous amounts of time trying to do what maybe others would see as something quite simple. Um, whereas others, instead of using that time to, to engage in what might be perceived as quite simple, they actually were able to spend time exploring and figuring out new platforms and just kind of playing around um, with them. So they had increased time because of this. Um, in terms of gaining new skills, in general, you know, the teachers engaged in some form of learning, um, whether that was formal or informal CPD, and that was very much so influenced by uh, the, the perceived utility of the training um, and then potentially the ease of the platform. So some of them, because of their competence, were very, um, they found it very easy to figure things out. They found the platforms quite simple um, and that through their life experience, they didn't really face any hurdles there. Um, some as well turned to social media to gain tips and some found it really, really useful in terms of informal CD, CPD, um, but others found it more so um, not exactly very useful in terms of how to use different tools. And this is something that was echoed in research in Finland um, as well. And then in terms of motivations to engage, some had very, very little interest, whereas others and, and the majority actually were engaging in some form of CPD within their schools. And actually through this, they were gaining confidence in their abilities. Um, and there were different strategies. Some were self-exploring, you know, YouTubing, figure thing, figuring things out. Um, but um, one spoke of how teachers who potentially are more likely to maybe just look at it and bark, they, they were the words she used, that they wouldn't be very um, willing to engage in any kind of CPD within ICT. Um, and this kind of highlights the problems potentially of a voluntarist model, uh, that how will we catch those who, who maybe are falling through the net. Then access to help was a very important resource available to, to staff. So having uh, family members, so one spoke of a technically savvy husband, or learning from a sister, learning from friends, learning from those in the school community and sharing ideas with one another. So, so continual professional development can actually cross over between one another if you have a collaborative um, environment. And then having time to engage, and this kind of touches on what Catherine was saying in the, the, the main, um, the, the opening discussion even, today that you know people are, are feeling under pressure and that there's a lot of, of activities for them to do and this principal spoke of suffering from what, what she, she called webinar overloads and unrealistic pressure to engage um, in CBD when they had so much workload already as it is so time to engage um, is a very important um, piece here to mention Just and then in, minutes there Jennifer if that's okay pardon there's four minutes left there, if that's okay. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, okay, thanks. Um, in terms of ICT use concerns, um, some spoke about feeling that their time was wasted, uh, that they were unable to provide the, the kinds of differentiation that they needed between students. Um, they also felt that they were potentially providing a weaker experience. Um, and then social media as well came up as a problem being used as a tool for comparison. So, um, 
which, which eroded their professional efficacy and potentially damaged relationships with, with parents. Um, and then there's an intrusive element as well um, of using ICT, the pop-up notifications um, and the constant access to, to teachers. And that worried some of them that a new precedent maybe will, will, will um, emerge. Um, some developed their own kind of protective strategies. And then in one school, they actually used corrective measures to communicate directly um, with parents. Um, in terms of our, our third and our final team, um, schools really moved from places where they had no previous experience of engaging in this, this form of teaching to becoming quite experienced providers in ICT. Um, based education and teachers learned to become quite pragmatic in terms of how they were teaching. Um, so some of the examples of what they, they realized the differences between students, um, so senior and, and junior groups, and then the different types of, of tools that they needed to use to engage with those students, um, as well those pupils as well. Discussions with parents as well became very useful to help to motivate um, teachers and then one major um, theme as well that emerged was reducing expectations and adjusting the feedback based on the kinds of challenges that families were facing. Um, so then the, the, the final part uh, looks at the collaboration and teachers helping each other out and not just teachers, also parents as well um, and, and consideration for pupils. So that involved the whole school community working together, which was really nice. That was kind of apparent throughout the, the research and collaborating. Uh, but it's important to, to mention as well that there was still an element of sink or swim. And even if there was informal um, learning amongst teachers, that kind of team learning may not always be sufficient because it was a bit of a case of the blind potentially leading um, the blind. So I'm not nearly there. <laughs> um, so our, for in terms of discussion and concluding remarks, um, COVID-19 was an extreme shift in ICT use. Uh, teachers gained some considerable experience um, from this. Some embraced it, some perceived it as a hindrance. Um, previous knowledge and access to help certainly seemed to improve the willingness to use ICT. Um, and then also interest and perceived benefits. School climates in general were quite collaborative, which is interesting if we think of a top uh, or a bottom up approach to, to rolling out new strategies. Um, and then helping teachers to become comfortable is another important um, um, area for future, for future consideration. And parent engagement as well was very important in terms of um, motivating, um, motivating teachers. So what can we learn going forward from this? Um, we know that we need time, effort, basic skills, motivation, and access to these resources. Um, and as participant four mentioned, it's about using it cleverly because technology is designed to make life easier, um, in their opinion. Um, having a willingness as well to share and learn from best practice will be very important. Um, and uh, something that really struck me was the, the lessons that teachers learned about giving pupils more independence to find and research things and that pupils are actually can be quite self-reliant and perhaps this was underestimated um, before so there's there's lots of scope there every teacher in the country you know has been given a crash course in this and they're they're um they're no longer afraid of using technology um so um, it's, it's, you know, there's some positive news coming from this, but a balance between ICT um, use in the classroom and traditional learning needs to be struck. And then my final point, just the next steps in our research, we're bringing in an additional author um, and we're going to um, roll out a quantitative survey using the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology. And we want to explore uh, the support out there for the thematic analysis findings and some of the areas that we're interested in is the professional efficacy, the willingness to use technology, 